Hello everyone, I am Dr. Ingrid Polkeri, a pediatric dermatologist, or a skin doctor for kids, speaking to you on behalf of the Society for Pediatric Dermatology. In this brief educational video, I will be discussing the basics of sunscreen and how to use it for your family. If you have not already seen it, check out our related video on sun protection. Let's talk sunscreen. Sunscreen is an important part of an overall sun protection strategy. You need sunscreen for body parts that can't be protected by clothing, hats, and sunglasses. If you use sunscreen correctly, it can help prevent skin cancer later in life. How much sunscreen must be applied to be effective? The general rule of thumb is that one ounce, or two tablespoons, is required to cover an average adult's body in a swimsuit. This is a lot more than many people use. And don't forget to protect lips with a lip balm or lipstick that also contains sun protecting ingredients. How often should sunscreen be applied? Sunscreen should be reapplied every two hours and more frequently if you are swimming or sweating heavily. Before you choose a sunscreen for yourself and your family, let's review these basic tips. Let's talk about SPF or sun protection factor ratings. Most dermatologists agree that an SPF of 30 or higher is best. SPF ratings higher than 50 offer minimal additional benefit, so a higher rating isn't always better. But don't rely only on the SPF number. An SPF rating only refers to protection from the effects of UVB rays, which cause sunburn. UVA rays are also important. UVA is responsible for the aging effects of sun on the skin, like brown spots and wrinkles. UVA also causes skin cancer. There is no number like SPF for UVA protection. Instead, examine the bottle to make sure that the product is labeled broad spectrum. This term means the sunscreen has protection against both UVA and UVB rays. What is the difference between chemical and physical sunscreens? The distinction between chemical and physical sunscreen refers to the active ingredients in the product. Most sunscreen ingredients are chemicals, which need to be absorbed into the top layers of the skin to work. Common examples include avobenzone and oxybenzone. Physical ingredients are things like zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, which form a layer on top of the skin and prevent the sun's rays from getting into the skin. Physical blockers are generally preferred for people with sensitive skin and in young children. Physical blockers work immediately after you apply them. Chemical sunscreens take effect about 20 minutes after application. Many sunscreens have a combination of both physical and chemical ingredients. Infants need sun protection too. For infants, it is much better to use strategies like shade and clothing. But if your baby is unable to entirely avoid the sun and your baby has skin exposed, a small amount of physical blocker sunscreen should be applied to these areas. Babies overheat easily, so be sure to avoid very warm temperatures for too long. Don't be fooled by words on the label. A product labeled as organic or baby isn't always gentle or hypoallergenic. In fact, many of the chemical sunscreens are technically organic. Instead of relying on these terms, look for zinc oxide and titanium dioxide as active ingredients, which are best for sensitive skin and in infants. Should you choose a spray or a lotion? Although spray sunscreens are convenient, it can be difficult to know if you have applied enough. Also, the FDA cautions that the particles in the spray may be inhaled. Avoid spraying these products near the face or mouth and consider avoiding them altogether in children. Can sunscreen be truly waterproof? There is no such thing as a truly waterproof sunscreen. That is why, as of 2012, sunscreen producers aren't allowed to make this claim. They are, however, allowed to say their products are water resistant. The label should report how long the product will offer the claimed SPF protection. Even the most water resistant products do not last longer than 80 minutes. I hope this video has helped prepare you to choose a sunscreen for yourself and your family. For more information, or to find a pediatric dermatologist in your area, please visit our website at pedsderm.net. Patient handouts, educational videos, and more resources are available online.